some doodles. Get all back to answer some more goddamn questions. Questions we're going over today, and I didn't proof or look for any for the first one. Haven't had goddamn time, so we're gonna do it together, goddamn it. But I did pull up the next video, figure out which one it was first in line. Now that was three weeks ago. Flesh Parade Kill Whitey is racing racism against white people, and J Dog thought it was funny as hell. Sure did. Fucking Flesh Parade White Kill Whitey, the CD specifically, because initially what the first release called Kill Whitey was the seven inch. But Relapse put it out as a compilation CD. That was the first thing I bought. I own both. I own the 7 inch and I own the CD. But as a kid, I just thought it was an album because I mean I was I was either you know what? I know for a hundred percent fact I was 13 when I was a fan of that and probably bought it at 14, but was a fan of them when I first heard them off the contamination tour. Why I know that? Uh since something to do with my first job, Haunted House and listening on the way. I know for a fact I was there. So I was 13 years old as a fan of Flesh Parade Kill Whitey, goddammit. But anyways, that the uh, CD, if you're only going to get one or the other, I would get the CD over the 7-inch because it's got the Kill Whitey EP, and then it's got one or two of the demos that wouldn't have been the 7-inch. That's how Relapse put it as a compilation disc. And just like Embalmer, There Was Blood Everywhere, same thing. It was the, the that disc, the CD is There Was Blood Everywhere 7-inch and Rotten Body Fluids, I believe, demo on there. But picking those up, because that was another one, the involvement there was lovely. I, I always, as a kid, 13, 14 years old, I thought it was an album until you learned, oh, shit, because, you know, just a dummy don't know any fucking better. But, um, yeah, that Kill Whitey CD, fucking some of the best goddamn grindcore fucking ever. If you don't know that shit, you're missing the fuck out. Again, unless you're only in a cabal fucking uh, can't crack a smile, fucking uh, too evil to listen to grind uh, black metal, well, then, yeah, get lost. Don't waste your time checking it out because you're not going to fucking like it at all. But if you like real shit, Go check out that goddamn flesh for a kill whitey. Fucking smash your goddamn fucking face in. Anyways, we're going to start at the top today, goddamn it. Life Eternal, I love that Goatman is a constant reference for young bucks. <laughs> well, yeah, because in all honesty, the scene, uh, who else would I use? I don't really, uh, he's the youngest person I know. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't know. What these, <laughs> yeah, he literally is. I mean, there's people in my life I know that are younger, but it's like family and shit, and they have nothing to do with the goddamn metal scene. You know what I mean? They're just basically, you know, basically they are kids. But as far as young wise and in the metal scene, like young adults, metal scene, yeah, he'd probably he'd be the youngest that I, I associate with any type of manner. Now, uh, there might be other guys in the comments that I comment on regular um, that uh, that are young as well. Like I think Layla Lover, he might be kind of young, but I don't think he's Goat Man young. I think he's maybe like 24, 25, which I still consider pretty fucking young. But, um, you know, not, not obviously, Goldman's the youngest guy, damn it, at least to my knowledge. James Murphy, he knows what's <laughs> James Murphy. <laughs> now, this is the one we all know. Uh, Flush Parade is to this day the best grind core. I don't know if I'd go as far as call it the best, but it's in my, as far as grind core, eh, well, here's the thing is, but again, keep in mind, that's some of the first grind core I've heard. For example, I heard Flush Parade before I even heard Terrorizer. What the fuck? That's fucking weird. What, this Dumbo idiot? How do you hear Flesh Pride before Terrorizer? Chill the fuck out. It was the goddamn late 90s, and Terrorizer World Downfall was kind of like out of print, and you and you, you, you buy what's kind of surrounding you or what you're checking out. You don't fucking know. So, um, yeah, I heard Terrorizer World Downfall a few years after um, Flesh Parade. And, uh, yeah, I would say that's in my top 10 uh, grindcore releases of all fucking time. Co even counting the gore grind releases, you know, the carcasses and shit like that, putting them in that category, I would say, yeah, Flesh Parade. That Kill Whitey does. Now, they, I never knew for years that they had anything else, but uh, I looked them up on Metal Archives. They definitely have another, <laughs> I guess you want to call it a full length, but I think they're like 20 minutes long. But whatever, album, EP, whatever. I know I YouTubed it, and it didn't stink, but it didn't have that same oomph. It didn't have that same feel. Now, to their credit, it could be kind of basically the same principle. It's just like, when I checked this out, it wasn't, I mean, it was a while ago, but it was in my adult years. I might have been like, 29, 30, 31 years old. So, you know, a good seven, eight, nine years ago now. Someone in that area is when I checked it out. So, <clears throat> as opposed to, like I said, Kill Whitey, I was 13 years old. So, it could be it's just as good, but just had the impact on me because being so young and impressionable here in the um, Kill Whitey, it was, I thought it was the greatest fucking thing ever, right? So, uh, but, you know, I, I, I kind of, you know, kind of agree that uh, it is definitely some of the best grind core for fucking me. And <laughs> it's just funny, James Murphy. <laughs> Like I said, doubt this is the James Murphy we're talking about, and I sincerely motherfucking doubt that goddamn James Murphy fucking even, forget even likes Flesh fucking Parade, hasn't even heard of him or heard of him. 
highly unfucking likely. We know Tom G has him. We don't even need to fucking talk about it, uh, uh, figure that out, right? Like, guess on him. We already know. Poser Metal Records. Dark Funeral going homeboy was the funniest thing ever. Yeah, I thought it was kind of comical. Guys fucking bring it up and it made a kind of reference a few videos people talk about. Now this is the, so what, two, three videos? Maybe this is the fourth video we could get at least some well brought up on. But yeah, fucking if ever I do the uh, metal karaoke joke, maybe I would do the black metal joke. And since Dark Funeral's fucking homeboys, maybe I'll uh, be the fucking Lord Aramon Dark Funeral. Imagine uh, them homeboying it up. So they'll fucking have the face paint, face paint right instead of inverted cross in their heads, do a goddamn money sign. Instead of inverted crosses, and you know how Lord Airman wears that like inverted uh, pentagram necklace? At least he's always on the release. I think he wears it live too. Instead of that, just fucking nothing but gold ass bling, dollar signs, fucking goddamn uh, boom box on the shoulder, sideways cap, naturally. Fucking let's put it, let's, uh, since we're in the shitty ass land, let's put it a fucking uh, a sideways Browns hat. Let's put him in a goddamn Ohio State fucking uh, hoodie. And uh, baggy ass fucking hood, not that baggy ass fucking uh, zip up jacket. That's really nice and baggy, looking like straight out of the fucking hood uh, of Ohio State. The beyond annoying ass motherfuckers too. If you ever if you ever see anybody with an Ohio State anything on, automatically you know fucking canoe. Guar guaranteed canoe. Couple exceptions here and there, but it's it's a ninety nine point nine percent chance this is a fucking canoe. In case you happen to give a fuck, or in case you're not aware of the land, that's a it's canoe central. Um, what else the fucking and uh, we'll put some goddamn uh put some uh, Gucci shoes on them. Super baggy fucking pants, baggy blue jeans. Yeah, I think that I'll, that'll cover it. That's, that's gonna be the fucking dark, dark goddamn funeral homeboy. Fuck yeah. What the fuck are the question marks? God damn it. I'm like ten fucking comments down. Here's a question. God damn it. T bone tone. <laughs> Singing out with fucking uh, <laughs> homeboy Dar funeral. Sup, J Dog? Question marks. You ever listen to Gravesend? Pretty sick death grind situation with punk hardcore elements, really stripped down and raw, but still catchy as fuck. I have not, but I know we've had them in stock because I've seen them. I've seen the name. Um, this is one of those things. I knew nothing about them, and it didn't look interesting enough to uh, just by the cover. Uh, but now that I know the name, and if it keeps sticks in my mind, I'll toss it on the fucking player. You know, there's definitely, because of this channel, you guys bringing shit up, um, I have definitely checked out. Just for example, like the Kill Division. Uh, that's, there's been a bunch of others, but that's specifically because of this channel. I, knew, I didn't know anything about it. Here we go. Uh, I don't think this guy's ever commented before, too. Jared Lesperance. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, bra -bra. What's up, J-Dog? Question for you, bra, bra That intro to the song, Are You Pornographic off... In the name of Gore Split, all oh, the uh, yeah the Exhumed Hemdale uh, split, uh, doing LPs. Don't know where the fuck the layout is. Hopefully, Easy E's almost fucking done with that. But yeah, the, the intro on there, uh, the porn. Yeah, I want to go get you know pornographic magazines. The hillbillies talking. That's what he's talking about. In case you don't fucking know on the on the Hemdale split, I always thought it was kind of a funny slash stupid slash cool. I guess and all in all in one. Anyway, let's see what the fuck he's got to say about it. What movie is that from? <laughs> fuck, I know, bra bra. I've been trying to figure it out, figure that shit out for over a decade, laugh out loud. You know, which one of my movie am I trying? And the guy was never too curious for that one, but uh, you know, we probably know is uh Will Romer, possibly uh Shane Von Ghoul from fucking Lurking Corpses. Um, for all you guys, yeah, a few people checked out the Lurking Corpses I brought up in the videos. Some people hated it, some people loved it. Um but in case you love or hate it, Shane's like one of the funniest and coolest fucking guys in the world. I know he started watching a couple of my videos, so if he sees this, Shane, put it in there, goddammit. Uh, check out uh, the Hemdale split with Exuni if you don't know it. I don't know if he's how familiar he is with Hemdale or Exuned. Uh, he's mostly a horror. I mean, he likes metal and he likes punk, but he likes uh, mo his forte, and what I know is expertise, is horror movies. And I'm going to assume that's kind of a horror movie, kind of a porno, I guess. <laughs> you know, we call it cunt killer, so they say. And the... Uh, Intro. Put it in there, Shane. Do you know that fucking movie? Because uh, I have no fucking idea. But I'm trying to think. There is a couple clips, not that one, that I was like, fuck, what is that from? Such a fucking cool-ass uh, intro. Maybe there were some mortician ones, but I figured them out. There's one on the tip of my tongue that I've always loved. And I can't think of what it is. That was, I always love that intro, but I have no idea what it's fucking from. You know what? I'm not as curious because I was for years. Somebody put it in. I'd never seen it. 
the intro from uh, Addicted to Vaginal Skin, Cannibal Corpse. Um, I never knew what that was from. To be honest with you, I guess I still don't, but I have somewhat of an idea. I, I think it was on this channel. Somebody put it in there because there's people I know. But whatever it is, I think it was some type of movie that I haven't heard of. Put it back in there again. Or maybe it was a maybe it was an interview with a serial killer or something. Put it in there what it is again. Remind me. I'll remember this time then. Uh, Addicted to Vaginal Skin, what that intro is from. But nonetheless, I still never actually heard the real source, you know, movie or interview or whatever the fuck it was from. So, but trying to figure that out from a decade left. Also, I had the original CD in my late teens and traded away like a poser. No problems, brah, brah. The layout I did see done was uh, the CD uh, layout was done, which we kinda, it's kind of funny. Is, uh, which I'm sure it's all cool because it's kind of like, yeah, I know it's cool because I've talked to the guys since. Is we never even talked about a CD or <laughs> a CD layout first. I'm like, fuck, man, what are you talking about doing a CD? I guess we can. <laughs> we're approved for an LP. So I guess we'll be doing a reissue CD too, and it'll look, uh, I don't know, identical. I'm not going to say identical to the original, but, but close to it, you know, with the cover and shit like that. And, uh, and this will lay out for that good. So just get the CD from fucking hells. But because, uh, yeah, at this point, if you're going to buy it, I mean, you're going to be paying top dollar on eBay because that's been, when did that come out? 96, I think. And when I got mine, I was kind of late to the game, too. I got mine in the early 2000s, but it was, even at that point, it was on eBay. I uh, hope you guys do end up releasing it on vinyl. We're supposed to. Brian Roth was talking to Matt Harvey in the goddamn Matt Harvey, uh, Matt Harvey interview that's yet to go well, maybe up by the time you can see this. But, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, we're definitely doing it. So I'll pick that up real quick. Yeah, I think you and a bunch of other people. That's like a lot of people consider that the greatest grindcore split of all time. And as far as splits... I would have to sit there and think about it, but it's definitely got to be one of them. Thanks, man. You're doing a great, <laughs> great job <laughs> with videos. Keep it up. Thanks. Appreciate that. Brah, brah. Goat man, disgorge reissues got me annoyed. Shame it'll never likely happen. Maybe on disgorge because I never got an answer. So if I keep kind of pushing and I will here and there, I'm going to ask... Uh, Next time I see Mike from Exhumed to give uh, Maddie Way a fucking kick in the nads for for me. Uh, hey, okay, the Deeds of Flesh, you gave me the response that was the most half-assed response ever. And quite frankly, it turned out to not to be true because now there's a Russian label that kind of did stuff. And Osmos Records is kind of doing stuff. So that kind of pisses on your box, that idea that I knew was never going to come to fruition. Whatever. Um, but, uh, but they never even said anything on the score. It's not even, go, go suck a dick, J-Dog. We're not interested in doing our something. Oh, say something. So the fact that I got nothing yet does mean that there's at least someone there. And the uh, cranial impalement, that fat-ass records, which uh, I don't know how the fuck he got of it, because prior to he, the fat-ass records did Discord cranial impalement, and he did Last Days of Humanity Hymns, the second album, which we did on LP. He did a 12-inch picture disc of that, but the cranial impalement's a regular LP. That's how I, I never knew who fat-ass records was. I think he's done one or two other things that I like that I got. Anyways, but he's a, he's a pretty, pretty small label. I want to say in Poland, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but definitely overseas. So he got permission to do cranial impalement. It's not like it's out of the fucking null of possibility. And that cranial impalement came out about, shit, it's actually been a little while now, maybe seven years ago, eight years ago. I own one. So to get Chile gutted, and at this point, I would do them all because I, I think everything by Discord California is good. It's just, it's just repetitive, but it's all good shit. There's nothing that sucks. Um, but my favorite is Chile gutted. That's the first thing I fucking heard. And uh, I think that's kind of like their hammer smash face. So, it's my favorite because it's the first thing I heard I had as a kid. I own the 12-inch picture disc. I like that cover art, too. A uh, little cartoony, but I like it. Um, so for nostalgic value putting out or for, you know, being a uh, you know, kid on Christmas coming out on Hells and also just as a, a business idea, just keep it fucking 100% over here. I mean, it would probably sell the best because, like I said, I think it's kind of like their known Hammer Smash fucking face album. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty pr pretty sure that's the con consensus. Um, so I'm going to tell that to Mike. Because uh, he knows Maddie better than I do. Well, I don't know Maddie at all. I'm not that old, but J-Doll who? I mean, he doesn't fucking know. It's probably Hell's Who, to be honest with you, too. Even though I have co contact him, talked to him in email. And I don't think Maddie actually ever replied to me. I know Jacoby did. It took him three goddamn years. Uh, but I don't think Maddie ever replied to me. Because I did get his email from uh, Joe from Mortal Decay. He said, yeah, here's Maddie's email. And just flat out no reply. Uh, I, I would have preferred to get the go fuck yourself or something, but... Absolutely got nothing. Again, that was that was probably four to five years ago. So not a crazy time frame, but a way it was way pre-COVID for sure. Way long enough to fucking put it like let's say he's like, ah, fuck this guy. We're putting it on ourselves. Okay, cool. No problem. First off, it'd be appreciative if you fucking send a response. 
But uh, no, whatever. No, no worries, though. We're born out ourselves. Okay, that was, like I said, four to five years ago. It would be out by now. So no, no, you're not. And so that was his reason. Like, I'm not replying to this guy. We're doing it ourselves. But, 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 but you're not. So, uh, hey, and as far as the heinous killings, because this week said next, every other, also no heinous killings, vinyl is likely. Yeah, got, that was, uh, <laughs> uh, Jamie brought up with no reply. Still literally zero reply, which, and that was a text. <laughs> can't tell me, uh, maybe I overlooked it or whatever. What, what do you get, like 200 texts a day? And I, I doubt it. Um, no reply on that. And then Joe, the main guy, uh, from my knowledge, he's, he's sick as a dog. Like, like when I say sick as a dog, from my understanding, he's basically on his deathbed. Sorry to hear that. He's got like, what, some type of lung cancer or some shit like that? Uh, I've, been, I've heard it a couple times. I'm sure you guys know the story better than me. But but also from what I understand, too, uh, regardless of how Joe is doing, I think uh, it's Jamie, because uh, the unmatched mentality, I think he owns it. So Joe's kind of like, he doesn't even get a say from, like, I don't, this is just what I fucking heard. I don't know if that's 100% the case. But if that Joe being sick, it would have nothing to do with it then because it's not even, he's the one that's going to give the approval. Um, again, if it's going to be uh, Jamie from uh, Broadequin, Unmatched Brutality, well, I'm going to put it out myself. Cool. But our reply would still be nice. And furthermore, are you putting it out yourself? Because I think he's getting a little confused because... Um, our friend Amber did hook us up because I guess she used to, uh, I guess she used to date fucking Jamie. I think that's what she said. I think that's what the case was. Got our contacts, gave it to Chase, and we got a, uh, the Broader Quinn reissue CDs in trade. That was a successful deal. I think maybe Jamie's thinking, oh, I'm doing it. It's like, no, no, it looks like you're doing the CDs. I was asking about an LP. How about, hey, you do the CD, bro. We'll do an LP. Let's just do that. If that's Because, I mean, unless he's planning on doing vinyl and shit, I've never seen him do vinyls. Correct me if I'm wrong again. And again, we'll maybe license it out to somebody else, like the um, like the broad equipment LPs that I showed on camera, what, three, six months ago that I got from the label in Spain, forget what label it did. Like, yeah, cool, just fucking tell me. Um, but I mean, yeah, and if he's like, oh, well, if they put it out, I don't really like selling vinyls, I just do CDs, packing vinyl, shipping vinyls, a pain in the ass. Say, like, okay, well, we don't have to pay you in copies, bro. We can pay you in a fucking royalty fees, like cash. Cash is king, right? Um Hit me up. Still want to do it. So, I mean, uh, because to be in all honesty, I, I would I would prefer it if we're going to do it. I prefer to do CD and LP. But, I mean, my biggest interest would be to do LP. Because uh, for, you know, collectability reasons, and it's never been done on vinyl. So, as far as I'm concerned, Jamie, hit me up. You do the CD, bro. License the LP out to us. We'll pay you. We'll, we'll, we'll talk shop. Talk business. Blah, blah. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be copies if you don't want... You know, I don't want those stupid records or pain in the ass to pack up and ship out. I don't want to take... Tote those to the post office. No problem, brah. We can do dollar bills instead. Those are easy to tote around. They're sure as fuck not inconvenient, right? <laughs> can never have too many. So I wouldn't say that the um, heinous killing is out of the question either. It's just kind of like all you devils. Anyone that knows, uh, from what I've been told, and it was Brian that told me, uh, that Jamie's Broadquin, Jamie Bailey from Broadquin, on Match Brutality, he's the one that owns heinous killings. And you guys know him, light as inbox him. j Doll wants to do a 12-inch vinyl LP, maybe make it crystal clear. Again, I get the vibe, not calling him a dummy or anything like that. I just get the vibe, maybe he's thinking, and the reason I think that is because the CDs, the Broadequin, when I asked about Broadequin, ironically, the CDs just kind of came out. I was like, oh, maybe that's why he didn't reply. He's like, well, I'm doing them. It's like, what well, you're doing? You're doing the CDs. You didn't do the vinyl. I was specifically asking about the vinyl. Now, maybe I said CD LP, but my, maybe I wasn't as clear. So was, maybe that's his past. Maybe that's what he's thinking. But, um, but the vinyl, yeah, no one's done it. So uh, if any of you guys know, maybe make that crystal clear. Hey, J Dog wants to do vinyl, bro. Vinyl, yeah, we know because I have I have a huge feeling because with the demand with that, the heinous killings and people talking it up, and it goes for what like hundred dollars on eBay the CD, and it's long out of prints. Um, and just a little sh shit I've heard in the grapevine, him uh, restarting up um, unmatched and putting out releases. I'm pretty fucking certain that that's on his mind to, to reissue them. Good for him. Good, good, good business move. I, I agree. And it needs to be. A lot of the fans uh, um, need it. Uh, full disclosure, I don't even have a fucking CD. You guys are the ones that kind of told me about it. I always knew the name. And I went on YouTube. I was like, this shit's fucking great. I was like, I especially like the goddamn vocals. This shit's fucking killer. I was like, I love doing this. It was one that I always heard the names, but I assumed it was just a little bit of... I don't know why I had... I, I figured it was kind of like the homeboy fucking uh, guttural slam shit that I was like, that was kind of later to the game that I wouldn't be into. So I never really... I never checked it out, to be honest with you. That just, that's full disclosure. Um, so yeah, I would like to get one too, but like I said, but make, make it clear, light his inbox. In. No, no, no. He's not talking about CD, bro, bro. You can still do it. He's talking about 12 inch vinyl LP. First hundred on picture. This would be badass too. Hopefully, uh, Eric and Chase don't shit on my parade on that one for, for that. Cause I, I think that'd be fucking badass as a motherfucker. 
Anyways, let's get one more guy in here. Did we even get one fucking question in here? Oh, yeah, we got like one or two, didn't we? Nail Black. Nail Black's back, goddammit. Question marks, flesh parade, question mark. I was going to check them out, but you said it would smash my goddamn face in, so I probably won't. That really hurt, I think. Yeah, but it's a good smashing, bra bra. It's a good smashing. It's like, you know how there's good fuckings and there's bad fuckings? You're like, I got fucked and it wasn't in a good way, but sometimes it wasn't a good way. Well, this is in a good way. And then we got Jody, because we made the last one. I see some question marks. And he got, he puts big red question marks. <laughs> right, right for Santa, Santa time. And he writes question big and bold. Would it being a slap nuts band mean you have thrash and grind beats? Hard rock alternative riffs play played using metal playing techniques and rapping, screaming, singing. So I'm pretty sure Joe agrees with me that about the, the, the silly ass remark about uh, Dark Funeral being the slap nuts based on because he's talking about their music. Yeah, once you have X, Y, and Z in there, that's what I was saying. I was like, well, what do, what do you mean? I mean, okay, so maybe you don't like the music because the music's pure black metal. Again, maybe you think it's oh, that's what I, that's what those Cavalt guys are going to say. It's too popular, trigger drums. Uh, overproduce. It's like, oh, okay, fair, fair enough. I can, I can, I can adhere on all those. What does that have to do with Slipknot? That is literally, literally nothing to fucking do with them whatsoever. In that case, Cannibal Corpse, Death Metal, of fucking Slipknot. That's overproduced. They use fucking triggers, and it's got um, and they're popular as well. More popular than Dark Fear, no, that's for goddamn sure. So I'm confused. Still fucking confused. But we've already been over uh previous videos, and I don't even know if anybody put those responses in there yet or not. Ah, we'll see. Whatever. But uh, Joe's as confused as I am, it sounds like, presumably, at least, at least that's what I took it out of the goddamn question. Anyways, comments, questions, search, you know what the fuck to do. Put in the comments box, get answered bright in the morning. Later, goddammit.